Good afternoon, and welcome back. This is Tuesdays with Pastor Jamie, and uh, I'm your host. Half hour special, where uh, we get to pray, I read some scripture, get to think about it. Um, not really sure who I'm reminded that I do it anyway because uh, I have a friend, Father Bob, uh, who lives in El Paso, Texas. Uh, he's a person I probably look up more, look up to more than most people. Uh, I don't know if you have somebody that you look up to and aspire to be like, but he does a mass every day from his living room like this. Same thing, doesn't really preach, just boop. and but he faithfully does it all the time. And uh, he's down there working uh, with our immigrant um, friends, not not necessarily uh, giving a solution to a problem, but just serving those people who are having a hard time. So anyway, um, so I'm back. I took a little uh, time off for Christmas and New Year's. Um, how was uh, your Christmas and New Year's? Did anybody celebrate at all? Man. Um, if you had a bad Christmas, a uh, disappointing one, I'm sorry. Um, I, however, <laughs> Teresa and I had a good one for Thanksgiving. We are all by ourselves. And uh, for Christmas, our three boys, we got to see them and be with them and isolate with them. And uh, so that was that was just great. We miss them a lot. Uh, we've been empty nesters for, what, about four years, I think. And uh, I just really miss them. However, after you've been with them for a few days, yeah, they can go. So maybe that's just the nature of things. Oh, if you see my dog, Luda, he's back here. He's waiting for me to take him for a walk. So um, with that said, um, we will pray for some people a little bit later. I'm going to look at a piece of scripture that comes from the book of Acts. And uh, it's called the Acts of the Apostles. Um, it's written by the same community that wrote the Gospel of Luke. So if you want to be kind of a scholar and learn some things, you can read all the way through the Gospel of Acts in one sitting. Um, I'm going to give you just a, a snippet. And if you want to really be a scholar, you can read all of Luke and then go right into Acts. And you'll go from the story of Jesus to what happened after Jesus, which is the story of Acts. So I'm going to um, be in the 19th chapter. So if you want to get your Bibles out and look at it yourself, um, uh, you know where the, the New Testament is, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, this is right after that, the book of Acts. Okay. Um, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Okay. Um, well, let's start with the word of prayer and then we'll go from there. Okay. So let us pray. Gracious Lord God, for your word, the best thing we have to your revelation, to know Jesus and to know you, we give you thanks. For this time of isolation that's been difficult and even uh, threatening and killing, uh, we ask for your presence to be with us. Help us today as we learn more about you. We pray this in your holy name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, you ready? Um, let me just give you a little background. So, so Jesus comes and goes. I shouldn't say it like that, but Jesus comes, resurrected, and then people are like, what do we do? And you know, the disciples were hiding in rooms. They're really scared. And then this, this thing that we call Pentecost, uh, the showing up of the Holy Spirit, shows up in front of a lot of people, and boom, um, it takes off. And all these people that were scared are now running out there, doing all sorts of stuff, losing their lives for the sake of Christ. So something happened there. And uh, so the news starts to spread a little bit. Now, today you're going to hear about a person named Paulus, and, uh, who's in Ephesus, uh, who is about 800 miles away from where Jesus happened, Jerusalem. And so word has spread that fast. But what they've heard is they've heard about John the Baptist, who came before Jesus, who was preaching a, a gospel of repentance and forgiveness. And so they hear about him, but they, they haven't heard about the spirit thing, about the Pentecost. 
So Paul, as he journeys out, the Apostle Paul, trying to be the uh, most effective, which he's most effective as he can, comes to this place, spends two years with them, teaching every day um, to help them kind of get it, okay? And so that's where this takes place. So I'm going to read from a different version that I usually read from, the international version, which isn't really new, but it's different from the revised standard version. Um, and it goes like this. This is chapter 19, beginning with the first verse. Paul in Ephesus, right? While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No. We have not even heard of this Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told people to believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 of them in all. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate, and they refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. I'll get back to that. So Paul left them, and he took the disciples with him, the twelve or so, with him, and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrrhenius. They went on for two years. This went on for two years, so that all the Judeans and the Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of God. There you go. So, kind of interesting, huh? Uh, and it brings up all sorts of uh, doctrines that uh, we have in the church and things we argue about. Um, but I'd like to try to help us focus on the things we have in common, the things that uh, we have as um, followers of Christ. Now, I, I said in there, I read something about the way, and if you haven't heard that word before, that's what Christians were called before they were called Christians. They were called people of the way, meaning they followed the way of Christ. And the book of Acts is really an act, uh, a book about the way, about how the very first Christians... Um, tried to figure out what it meant to follow Christ. Um, and like I told you, this is about 800 miles from where Paul is from and where all the things happened in Jerusalem. So um, Christianity is, is spreading fast, um, and Paul goes to this place. He chooses this place, thinking that this is a uh, crossroads. This is where lots of people are that are both Judean, who are people of the way who used to be Jewish, and now we're con kind of converting into being Christian, and people have never heard anything about about Jesus. So he figures that this outlining area is a good place to go, spends two years um, teaching uh, these people uh, the ways of Christ, and there you go. So um, when he gets there, he talks to them about baptism, and maybe that's something that they, he had heard. Um, there's a couple people... I'll get to that, uh, who kind of set him straight and kind of told him what was going on. But again, these people, didn't they didn't have a Bible. They had Jewish uh, first five books of the Bible. They, they had that, but they didn't have anything about Jesus. And they had not heard any personal encounters. So they just didn't know. So Paul's like, Ugh. okay, so I need to sit down here and tell you the whole story of the gospel, which he does. And... Uh, Apparently, it didn't go very well in the synagogue. Now, in the synagogue, it'd be like walking into church, walking into a cathedral, walking into a place where lots of people have invested in a previous faith and aren't necessarily going to go, oh, okay, we'll, we'll take this. And so, like you said, they got maligned. Uh, eventually, Paul was put in prison and killed for this, um, but not at this time. 
Um, so it wasn't going really well. So he's like, you know, what do I do? And uh, so he took these 12 or so, is that what it said, 12, uh, apart and went to some lecture hall. Who knows, you know. But I wasn't in the religious synagogue. It was someplace else. And uh, they were, uh, he told them stuff. They were able to ans ask questions, go through all the stuff. So they could, they could get kind of the practical things uh, that made up following the way. Which means that it wasn't necessarily religious in the sense that we understand. Um, it wasn't about rituals. It wasn't about tradition. But it was about how you live your life. The way in which you live your life. Which Paul told them is the way of Jesus. So in order to live the way of Jesus, you got to know the way of Jesus. And so that's what Paul is doing um, as far as we can tell from, um, from this letter. Um, a lot of the things that Jesus tell, tells them is not new uh, in terms of what they've heard in their scripture, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Um, they've heard about loving your neighbor. They've heard about um, worshiping God and, and God alone. They've heard about these standards and fundamentals of the faith. Um, it's just they've, they've seen them in a, in a different kind of light, um, in more of a judgmental kind of light. And so, so now Jesus comes, following John, who was of repentance, forgiveness. And Paul says, there's this other thing called the spirit. And they're like, yeah, spirit, what, what are you talking about? Um, and he says, well, it's the spirit of Christ. It's not just a book. It's not just a rule. It's not just a ritual. It's not just a lecture. It's the real presence of Christ, that the spirit. So he, he draws this connection between Jesus and the spirit. When Jesus lived here, physically walked around, that was in human form. Uh, God was in a, a human container. And now that he's gone, because the body disintegrates, uh, especially when you get hanged on a cross, and it is hanged, not hung. Anyway, um, you can look it up. It's a long story, but I'll tell you later. Um, so Christ is present, but just not in that form. And so that, ooh, gee, that's really hard to understand. So then they, they started asking Paul questions about, well, was he really a person or was he just a spirit, just like a ghost? No, 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 he was a real person. So these are the ki kinds of questions they're asking. And Paul is trying to explain to them, as best we can in the mystery of faith, how Jesus and the Spirit are connected. And that would be that the Spirit that's now with us, in us, around us, through us, is that Spirit of Christ. It's just not contained in one human form. Okay, So he's talking to them about this, and they're trying to follow along. And uh, he's talking to them about how it's not just a cognitive belief, uh, but it's a practice. It's a way. This is a way of life. And, and it doesn't necessarily follow all the rules. For example, Jesus healed people on the Sabbath day. The rule is, in the scripture, you don't do anything on the Sabbath day. And if you do, that's a violation uh, against God. But Jesus says, really? What are you going to do? This person is dying and you're not going to help them? So the Spirit overrides. The Bible talks about it as complementing. Jesus says, I didn't come to overturn these laws, but I, I've come to put, put them in place. And, and I think when we get afraid, when there's chaos, when things are out of control, we like rules. We like to be said, do this. Okay, fine. And the spirit doesn't really work that way. It's uh, ugh. anyway. So that's what Paul is talking about uh, about the community. How how Christ is present. Talks to them about communion. Christ being present. And and again, these guys. All we know of them is they knew about John and heard about this Jesus, but they don't know anything else. So Paul is there. No wonder it took a long time. Um, so he's there for two years, um, telling them all these things. And there are people around, like you heard when he was in the synagogue, who are saying that they were maligning him, saying these aren't, things aren't true. So there's those people around that are saying this is fake, this is false. Um, and we have all sorts of people like that around. I, I've heard of two scams and experienced them this, this last Christmas. Uh, one where you can send in your money and buy this little snowblower, and they send you, I'll show you. They 
advertise a snowblower for, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. And this is the snowblower they send you. It's an ice scraper. Why do people do that? Um, another one is uh, I looked through automobiles just because I'm a car guy, and I saw this truck for sale. I'm like, wow, this is a really good deal. I got to look up, look this up. And so I, I went, and the person says, um, email me. So I emailed them. And they're like, yeah, we put this on eBay and this. I'm like, mm. so I called around. It's a big scam. So um, people, so Paul comes and says to them, um, if you're going to be a Christian, you don't do these behaviors. You don't scam people. Uh, there's a different way to live. And of course, he talks about what Jesus did, which was the living example of loving your neighbor and loving God, so that they could not, ju they just didn't see it as a theory or uh, uh, some sort of um, doctrine. They, they saw it in a living person. What does it mean to love your neighbor? Oh, that's what it means, to feed them. Mm, okay. Oh, it means going over to a person's house to eat who, who nobody else likes. Oh, see, so it gives us, does the same thing for us. So um, this is kind of the things they're talking about. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. So um, Paul is there spending two years trying to talk to these not numbskulls. They're not dumb. He's not being judgmental. It's just these people didn't know. Um, and I suppose that's what uh, a missionary is. And just to give you a little example of, of how the church is going back to a more missionary form, um, I'll give you an example of my church, Christ King. In the 1950s, they're about 60-some years old. I don't know the exact date. Somebody can help me out with that. Um, they started this church on the southeast part of town because there wasn't one. And everybody there was Scandinavian. Everybody there moved into a, a, a house. They were building houses that cost about $7,500. $7, I just know that. And everybody was pretty homogeneous. And there you go. And they were Christian. So they form a church and they've got kids coming out of the walls and they're doing all sorts of stuff and it's really great. Now, if you go to Christ the King, I'm, I think maybe three families of those original families still live in the neighborhood and it's different. They're not all Christian. They're not all Scandinavian. They're not all uh, in the same economic group. It's a whole variety. So now, uh, instead of being a, a place where, okay, these are we're Christians, um, and we'll reach out some other way. Um, now you're in a neighborhood uh, that's very diverse. And that's the way this was um, in Ephesus, where um, Paul is, is dealing with all sorts of people, and these followers are dealing with all sorts, sorts of different kinds of people, and you in, in different ways then. And you can go into that for a long time. So... Um, so apparently the, the people who uh, had heard about John the Baptist were trying to follow the way, didn't know what to do. They were, they were pretty selfish. They were, you know, maybe they were doing scams. Who knows? And Paul says, no, 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 no. To be a follower of Christ means to live a different, a different way. So you can think about that in our culture. And I've struggled that, with that for a long time because of just the inequality that's in the world. And, and how I live in a house, um, not in a cardboard box. Um, what do I do about it? Um, that's always the struggle. And uh, depending on where, where you're at in life and, and in your struggle, you know how it goes. Um, but here we are in um, 2020, where we have all gone through a kind of uh, suffering, um, all of us together in the world, and we've discovered a few things like they did in Ephesus. Um, one of the things they discovered is they need each other. They, they need to have a group. They can't do this in isolation. Paul comes and talks to the 12, and then the 12 go out and talk to other people. So they have, we need people. Um, I sit in my house all the time, isolated, hate it. Um, but we're trying to communicate uh, different ways, right? Through the internet and other ways. Um, but these, these first century uh, uh, Christians um, were having a hard time. And it's kind of like us. They, a lot of these were, meaning that they went to the synagogue and they went through 
um, uh, rituals and they sang together and they did things together and they were a community of faith. But now this is different. And it's like that for us too, right? We used to sing. We used to get together. We used to have coffee. We used to blah, 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 um, do youth activity. We did all this stuff together, but now we can't do that. So how do we live out our faith? When we can't do those things, worship that build us up, what are we going to do? And that's kind of how they felt too. Now we're doing this new way, this new thing. And Paul's like, yeah, 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 just hang on a second. We're going to talk about that and we'll, we'll get to worship later. Which I think is an interesting uh, concept. Whenever a new mission church starts, at least in the ELCA, like the one over in the Madison area, uh, Pastor Jessica Miller, um, they do not worship for a year when they start. So she gets over there, she meets with a few people, just like Paul's meeting here with a small group of people, and it kind of goes like this. And they do things in the community like feed, pour, uh, house, the, do all these things like that, that show the love of Christ. And then after a year, they come together and say, you know, now I think we have a community and we worship, which is an interesting concept, I think. Because a lot of times we think of it the other way around. We, oh, we come to worship and then we kind of do all this stuff. Um, and that's just because we don't live if you're a member of a congregation in the, the same paradigm, okay? So Paul is doing all these things. How does this apply to us? Um, how do you be faithful? How do you live out your faith when you don't, you don't hear the band, you don't hear the organ, you don't come to worship, you don't sing? Um, what do you do? Do you, do you watch the evangelists on TV? I heard one the other day. No, I won't go there. Wow. Anyway, um, so uh, to worship God is to be in a faithful uh, way of living. And it's not, again, like I said, it's not a legalistic type of way. Um, it's not, if you're going to be like Jesus, be like him, you got to wear sandals and have long hair. Um, but it's the way you love God is by loving your neighbor. And how is the best to do that without being worn down by guilt, which happens to me a lot. Um, so what Paul is doing is he's taking what they know as religion and, and turning it around like this to say that um, the way of Jesus is not just um, a personal benefit to you. It's not just about you and God and how you become better and how you, 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 but it's a focus on the other. So God is the God of all of us. And if we want to live in community, we love our neighbor. Where I think a lot of times religion, again, can be all about me. And you know that, right? Like when things are tough and think, you, oh, God, help me, help me, help me, help you. You know, you pray about yourself. Pray. And, and we have personal relationship with God. So God is my buddy. And he, blah, blah, blah. Um, but God is much bigger than that. Uh, and it's not just about you. Um, so this this personal is turning turns more to um, Jesus is the way and the spirit is the life that helps us do the way while we're here on this earth anyway. So Paul's trying to explain these things. And like I said, uh, there was uh, uh, two people, um, Priscilla and Aquila, two women, who were watching uh, Paul uh, preach in the synagogue and going, yeah. and they pulled them aside and they said, here's the deal. Um, these people don't know the basics. We, we, we don't know anything about Jesus, blah, blah, blah. You're going to, so that's when um, Paul then decided to take them to the lecture hall or wherever it is and start teaching them a different way. And so he was giving them uh, not only the information, but seeing what it means to be a Christian practically, functionally, um, how it means that, uh, what it means that Jesus is connected with the Spirit and giving them a vision, a bigger vision of what God is doing in the world, not just in my personal life, not just for my own benefit, but what God is doing in the world to reconcile the world uh, back to God. So how Jesus and the Spirit are connected. Um, apparently, again, those people only had heard about John the Baptist and thought, oh, that's good enough. Um, but Paul gives them a whole new outlook on life and what it means to be a Christian, to be a person of the way. Um, 
Oh, and so after you spend uh, two years with some people, um, it's sort of like getting a degree, maybe, and uh, and you know, how and you take that out to other people. So Paul is really teaching them how to be leaders, and that's what happens exactly. The, this this little church in uh, Ephesus goes out into the Roman Empire and just pfft, starts telling people, this is the way, this is how you follow him, this is the spirit, and Christianity took off in that first century like has never been seen before. Um, and who knows uh, why we're not that way today, I don't know. But Paul in Ephesus, there you go. That's 10 verses from chapter 19 of the book of Acts. And like I said, if you want to know how it all went, read that book. Um, so those are my things today. I told you I'd be done in half an hour, and we're at a half an hour. Um, just to let you know, uh, we get again, I, I continue to pray for lots of the same prayers because I keep getting those. Um, I know of people that are in the hospital that have gone through surgery, and that's a big deal, um, especially during uh, COVID. Uh, I know people who have COVID. I know nurses do I know doctors? I know doctors who have died of COVID, but I know some nurses who are really stressing, put on your mask because this is a real deal. And if you don't think so, come here and we'll show you. So praying for those people. Um, also praying for those people who have lost loved ones during this time. It's bad because you can't have a, a funeral. You can't hug people. You, you can't hold their hands. That's tough. Um, especially want to pray for the Rutten family, uh, terrible death that they're experiencing. Just trust me, just pray at Rutten family. Um, um, and just, you know, all, all, all of us who are struggling for being isolated, living in a way that we are not created to live, um, and how tough that is. There are people that are uh, severely depressed because of it. Uh, it was the thing that pushed them over the edge. There are people that are turning to other ways, like alcohol, drugs, et cetera, to try to cope with this. Um, there is uh, a higher abuse. There are all these things, you know? And uh, like uh, my friend, Father Bob, you just keep at it. You just keep praying and keep doing what you're doing, okay? So I'm gonna end with prayer and um, keep doing what you're doing, okay? Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we come to you in prayer. You know the prayers of all of us. We, we trust that you hear them. We pray for all the people that are affected from the pandemic, whether those who are diagnosed with it, who are struggling with it, who've had friends and relatives die of it, and those who are on the front lines working to protect us. We uh, ask for um, your healing upon those who have chose destructive ways to deal with this pandemic. Be with us as we deal with it. We especially uh, pray for the Rutten and Lamont family uh, upon the tragedy in, in their lives. Lord, wrap your arms around them. Be with them when we can't. Um, we pray for years of healing for them. We pray for those who are wandering, those who feel like they're lost, um, May your word reach them um, in the best way that it can to sh show that the word that you've given us is the best revelation we have for knowing who you are. We thank you for your son Jesus, the life he lived so that we could have practical examples of what it means to be part of the way. And we ask that you'd help us in our doubts, in our faithlessness, to have faith um, to keep doing what we're doing, to trust that uh, loving our neighbor is worth it and that loving our neighbor is a way that we can love you in spite of not being able to be in our places of worship. I pray for all the people that join us on uh, my little broadcast and I ask, Lord, that you would be with us all. Um, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Remember, if you're from Christ King, we have worship, what is it, tomorrow uh, <laughs> at 6 o'clock, um, and then also on Sunday at 9 o'clock. So join us for worship.